tongue ties, this particular condition is characterized by a small fibrous band that restricts the normal function and range of movement that the tongue has. It frequently presents at childbirth and when the attending medical doctor or nurse is speaking to the mother, you may be told that there is an abnormal restriction of movement because of a tongue tie. In those instances, the mothers tend to have some problems with regards to feeding the child. The first problem is that if the child is unable to engage the nipple properly, when that happens, the child tries to bite the nipple and the child causes pain to the mother. And what happens as a result is the mother then has a buildup of too much of milk and not motivated to carry on with lactation or breastfeeding. What the child needs at that point of time is colostrum, which is the first breast milk that's produced, and that contains lots of immunoglobulins and immune development required for the child's growth. A tongue tie release when it's done timely will obviate these problems. Now, some of these children go back being undiagnosed. The child is trying desperately to feed, and because the child is unable to get a good seal around the breast, the child tends to swallow lots of air. Now when that happens, the child has flatulence or is very gassy, burping a lot and being very uncomfortable because the air is trapped. In addition, they get very tired because they are unable to stay for a prolonged period of time, being unable to suck the breast to get as much milk out as they can. And a few of them get supplemented with formula milk. Some of these children yet get undetected. The parents, especially if it's the firstborn, may think that this is completely normal. The tongue is one of the primary organs to help enable to allow the child's front face, we call this the maxilla, or the pre-maxilla, the first part of the upper jaw, to expand. So easily said, if a patient does not have a well-formed upper jaw, it can be due to a tongue tie. As the child learns how to pronounce words or so, the tongue tie typically forms restriction on pronunciation of certain words. The commonest one is the pronunciation of the letter R. And when you pronounce R, it typically sounds like L. Because of the restriction of movement, the swallowing is affected. As the children grow older, they will get used to hearing themselves sound exactly the same way. The problem we have is that even despite the tongue tie release, may still think that that sounds normal. In which case then, they have to work in conjunction with a speech therapist for them to try and relearn pronouncing those words and how to use those tongue muscles again. For tongue tie release surgery, depending on the age that the patient presents, and I have operated on children a day old, all the way up to two years, it's a very simple procedure, not more than 15 minutes. Here at Nuffield, what we do is we get the parents to help uh, with the support of my nursing team. I typically get the mother to wait in a separate room where the patient actually is ready to feed the child. The father, and sometimes the grandparents, will be with me as we do the surgery. We use topical anesthesia to anesthetize the tongue. After about five minutes or so, the child will only feel a very, very blunt sort of movement rather than sharp. What is done? A scalpel, which is a surgical knife or a surgical scissors, is used to literally cut the tongue tie and perform a release deep inside. The rest of the time is spent calming the child down as the parent walks with the child to the area where the mother is waiting, hopefully either milk from the breast or formula in a milk bottle to try and get the child to feed. When the child actually does feeding at the nipple, the moment they clamp onto the breast itself, that process alone reduces the bleeding. Following successful hemostasis, which means the bleeding has stopped, the parents can go back home. So your child has had tongue tie release and perhaps lip tie release at the same time. Now, the two exercises that need to be done after tongue tie release. The first one is scar massage, S-C-A-R, scar massage. And what that involves is using your little finger by putting it at the base of the tongue, like that, and applying a very simple digital pressure, allowing your fingernail to blanch. That's all the force is required. Not more than required 
for your fingernail to blanch in color. Now that's done to prevent the scar from actually trying to close up very quickly. You should be trying to do these exercises at least 30 seconds each time round, six to eight times a day for at least six weeks. In children, if you don't try to agitate the area using scar massage, the area heals within two to four hours, which also means every two to four hours, some form of activity has to be done to prevent this from happening. The next set of exercises that have to be done will include stretches or tongue lunges. As a lunge, a child may not be able to do this unless it's much older. If the child is older, you can take a spoon and ask them to use the tongue to follow. And as a child uses the tongue to protrude left and right, you allow the area to acquire a greater range of movement. Now for the child or the infant that is unable to follow instructions, you lie the child down flat on a bed, you get behind the child, so the child's head is very nicely supported by the mattress. You use a finger and you put your finger at the base of the tongue and pull backwards gently. This procedure, like the previous one, has to be repeated 30 seconds each time round, six to eight times a day for a period of six weeks. My reviews after the surgery typically is at two weeks to make sure that everyone's doing the exercise properly and also at three months to ensure the child's completely symptom-free from the tongue tie release. In the vast majority of patients who've had tongue tie surgery, if they're infants, the topical anesthesia is probably as much as they need. But if parents feel that the child is uncomfortable, you can give paracetamol syrup or ibuprofen syrup, or might have a fever or so, you should bring your child in at the point of time for an assessment by the dentist.